Hello and welcome. My name is Joss Corvus. This series looks at story elements, the vital aspects of story craft that elevate our novels and screenplays above our intuitive capacity to tell tales. In this video, we are looking at the stakes. As we set up the normal world of our story and introduce characters, we also lay the foundations for what's at stake during the story. What will the characters fight for as the narrative unfolds? Whether your story is set in a modern timeline, future, past, other world or space, it exists not in the entirety of the world, but inside a bubble. What the characters care about defines the bubble. Placing what they care about in opposition to a threat gives us the stakes. Strong world and personal stakes are the basis for a good story. If a genius weapons inventor gives up his day job to build a flying suit, we have a sequence of events. If we know why he gave up the day job, we have the world stakes and a story. The first act of The Godfather shows us Vito Corleone cares about family and business. Vito is a mafia don. Beyond family and business, he wants respect beyond that of a killer. The family business defines the world stakes of The Godfather and the bubble for the entire story. Vito's desire for respect beyond the Mafia is why Michael lives outside the business. The threat to the Corleone family is American crime's fascination with the emerging drugs trade. The threat is foreshadowed in an outwardly genial conversation with Solozo. Vito refuses to join the drugs trade. The refusal sets the Corleones in opposition to the other families, although they won't know this until later. For now, they have refused a business offer from Solozo, part of Vito's everyday machinations as the family don. The opening scenes of Monsters Inc. show us Mike and Sully are a team. They live in a world powered by child screams as fuel. Mike and Sully are celebrity scarers for Monsters Inc. It is the Monsters Inc. company that represents the world stakes. At the beginning of the movie, Sully's personal stakes are the world stakes. He derives his celebrity status from Monsters Inc. The threat to their world bubble is a consequence of using child screams to power a city. Children are harder to scare, there isn't enough scream. We are shown the shortage through Mike and Sully walking to work rather than driving. News headlines reaffirm the scream deficit. They fall short of collecting their daily scream quota, prompting concerns the company might go out of business. The threat is foreshadowed when Waternoos proclaims, I would do anything to keep Monsters Inc. from going under. His pursuit of the illegal scream extraction machine is at the heart of the threat through the story, and like all good threats, it starts simple. For now, in Act 1, a genial mafia meeting and a troubled scream collection shift are all part of setting up the normal world in the respective story bubbles. For the story to begin, we need to threaten the stakes. The Act 1 turning point, otherwise known as the change, will do just that. In The Godfather, Solozo's attempt to assassinate Vito Corleone is the Act 1 turning point. The bubble has contracted, the threat has made itself known, the world stakes are threatened. In Monsters Inc., the Act 1 turning point, the change, is Boo, symbolising Scream, escaping from the human world into the monster's world. Sully treats Boo's appearance as a personal threat, believing her to be toxic. It quickly becomes the reputation of Monsters Inc. at stake as Sully fails to put her back into the human world. We now have the threat front and centre in our stories. Why don't the characters immediately turn around and seize the invitation to conflict? Well, they would if they only had personal stakes. They also have to honour their commitment to the world stakes, which has them initially refuse the journey. This section from the change to the Act 1 climax typically consumes half of the first act. We're still setting the stage, still defining the world and characters. The events leading to the end of Act 1 will force the characters to accept the journey in the best interest of either or both the world and personal stakes. In the aftermath of the first assassination attempt, Michael is still a background character. The story goes to some lengths to re-emphasise Michael is bound by his father's desire for respect beyond the business. Michael has no personal or world stakes at this time beyond his affiliation to the family. 
Sonny is the heir to the business and is busy weighing his responsibility to the world stakes. Should he strike a deal with Solozo or start a war they're not prepared for? It's only as Act 1 closes that Michael goes to the hospital to see his father and is forced to make a decision. The second assassination attempt at the hospital is the Act 1 climax. Michael becomes active in the story when he confronts the incoming gunman. He risks his life to save Vito and indirectly the world stakes. Michael's demonstration of love for his father now gives us his personal stakes. Michael is on the story journey. Pixar always do things a little different and usually very well. The Act 1 change is introduced about three quarters through Act 1. Most of the story setup is already in place when the change happens. Because Sally's personal stakes so closely match the world stakes, the story only needs to escalate Boo's threat after the change, from Sully to the Monsters Inc. world. So Sully drops Boo into a bag and seeks Mike's help. And she of course escapes, and at the Act 1 climax Boo is discovered in a sushi bar. Sally and Mike are faced with giving Boo up and threatening Monsters Inc. even more than it already is, or hiding Boo in their apartment and protecting the world stakes. They hide Boo and Sully and Mike are now in the story journey. The middle of the story is unsurprisingly called the midpoint. It can be considered the peak of the story mountain. The initial threat to the world stakes is overcome, or seems to be. Of course, the threat quickly magnifies. The bubble perimeter contracts further. The midpoint is important because it's tempting for writers to think of the midpoint goal as the story goal. When planning the story, we might think of the ending as Michael shooting dead Solozo, problem over. Or we might think of getting Sully and Mike back into Monsters, Inc. and putting Boo back through a door as the end of the story. Because we are figuring out so much during the first draft and have a stack of excess in the page to page, we might even have 100k words. We might believe we actually have a story, but we don't. We learn about story elements so we can see and rectify this. In The Godfather, the midpoint is Michael shooting dead Solozo and the police captain on Solozo's payroll. The wild threat to the Corleone family appears to be resolved. For Michael, he has secured his father's safety. For Vito, his stakes are defeated. Michael can never be the respected face of the Corleone family. Michael will be forever bound to the family's fate and the world stakes. As we turn to the second half of Act 2, we discover the threat to the Corleones has escalated. Solozo was just a figurehead for the other Mafia families. The Corleones will learn they are in a direct conflict with all the Mafia families. In Monsters, Inc., the midpoint is Sally and Mike with a chance to return Boo to the human world. Returning Boo resolves the threat to Monsters, Inc., secures their reputations. But Sully's personal stakes have evolved. He has grown attached to Boo and will only return Boo through her bedroom door. As Mike and Sully move into the second half of Act 2, they slowly discover the real threat of Waltonoose's Scream extraction project. As our stories unfold after the midpoint, we realise it wasn't just about killing Solozo or putting Boo back through the door. The bad guys are closing in. As the curtain on the real threat is slowly drawn open, the world and personal stakes will come under increasing pressure to the Act 2 climax. At the Act 2 climax, the world stakes will take a death blow. An essential element keeping the bubble together is defeated. In The Godfather, the Act 2 climax is the death of Vito. Michael has lost his closest friend and mentor. Michael himself has been betrayed and is lined up to be assassinated. Michael's stakes are defeated. The death of Vito and the family's future has never looked more fragile. The Monsters Inc. Act 2 climax has Boo captured by Randall and Waternoose to be a test subject for the Scream extraction machine, the Scream equivalent of fracking. Sully and Mike are banished to the human world with no way back to save Boo. Waternoose only wants to keep Monsters Inc. operating, but his ever desperate and illegal focus on Scream extraction can only ruin it. The final act resolves all issues. 
We can't guarantee the resolution will be honey and roses, but the characters will find a way to fight back and preserve the world and personal stakes, or not. In The Godfather, the resolution sees a Corleone family under Michael stronger than ever. In protecting his father's legacy, Michael has become a remorseless killer, the very thing Vito hoped the family and Michael could avoid. The world stakes have informed the overarching story theme of family unity above all else. In Monsters Inc., the resolution is cheerier. The company is now thriving using child laughter for power instead of scream. Sully has grown from the jock celebrity to the empathetic and considered CEO. The world and Sully's evolved personal stakes can be aligned with themes that may hint at laughing children being a better proposition than screaming children and possibly state something about the immoral exploitation of failing fuel sources for the grown-ups. Story stakes are a vital element of good and involving narratives. Making both world and personal stakes key elements of the characters helps tailor the perfect threat. Threat versus stakes creates the essential framework to build your story, forges dramatic conflicts and reinforces your story theme. The genius weapons inventor I mentioned at the beginning, of course, is Tony Stark. Stark's world stakes are the weapons industry he inherited from his father. Stark gives up the day job because his own weapons almost kill him. Stark sees the damage they do beyond their intended purpose. His personal stakes are to build something for himself, beyond the shadow of his father. As Yinsen says at the Act 1 climax, don't waste your life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that I've provided some insight into story stakes. Catch you in the next one.